Hi, this is the Ant Miner Repair Channel, and tonight um, I'm going to talk about what to do with some of these chips you take off the board. Um, these these chips are uh, getting kind of expensive out there because of the chip shortage, and um, truth be known, a lot of times the chips you pull off the board or try to replace are actually still good. So tonight I'm going to show you how I'm reconditioning them. I'm using these tools and um, we'll go through that. Um, so if you haven't subscribed already, please do hit that subscribe button or notification so you know when you get these because um, actually if you went back and watched all my videos, I try to share just about everything I know. So you'd probably have a, a real head start on repairing or at least managing your um, managing your amp miners if you did that. So I've, I'll get started then. Oh, one last thing. You can come talk to me on our Discord server. You go to the Discord server, read the rules, click on the green checkbox, and you'll have access to just tons of information. There's 2,500 subscribers there. So um, that's a great deal. So tonight, um, I go through this process once in a while. Um, a lot of times, I'll replace the wrong chip. I'll find out it's another chip that's the problem. Um, I might be reflowing and my hand slips. I make mistakes, so I'll pull that chip off and I'll have new chips ready to go, so I'll throw that on instead. So I, I kind of, as I pull chips off, I, I segment them out. Um, I actually have bags for bad RO, bad clock, and, and there are some, some ways of testing these chips. Um, I'll probably test these, and it's by running some voltage through. There's some other videos on Discord on that, on how to do it. I might even have a video on that right now. But um, the key is, is I have to get this chip ready to go back on a board. And um, the reason why probably I took like this chip off was because the solder was bad. So what I want to do is get rid of this solder and put some good solder on. And I've been saving these up for a while, so I have, you know, quite a, quite a stack. You notice I have some copper ones in here. Um, those are chips that I placed that it didn't take. So I'll just take these back off, clean them up, I'll use them again. Um, it is important not to get them too hot. So I have a, I bought this uh, BG, uh, BGA reballer holder and it will fit the ASIC chip. It helps, it does help me do this job. Um, it gets a little stiff once in a while because it kind of gets a lot of flux stuck down in there. I am going to use flux. Um, I'm going to use some solder wick. I've got two types. Um, I think I use both. The chip quick is really good solder wick, but it's very thick. Um, might insulate actually from a lot of heat happening. And then I've got something that came with my Yahoo 1000B station that I have here. I have alcohol because I get a lot of flux on the chip. I'll just go ahead and I actually just throw them in this lid of alcohol down here and just start cleaning them. And of course, tweezers. So I'm going to do a couple chips with you guys tonight. I have a special set of chips over here. Last night I was trying to reflow a board and somebody used the wrong solder on the top of the chips. And so I actually pulled the heat sink off with the chip when I tried to just take the heat sink off. So I'm not only going to clean one side of these chips, but I'm going to turn over and try to get this solder off. I will keep these separate until I can use them and make sure I, I um, mix the solder on the top with some low, lower temperature solder. So if you didn't catch that video, um, you can catch it. It's the video I posted before this, um, why I have these chips sitting here. So instead of breaking out more new chips or buying more new chips, I've been saving these guys. Um, I can reuse them. Now, sometimes genuinely the chip is bad. Um, sometimes even new chips just don't work. Um, so you have to be prepared if you spend all the time preparing, you know, the base and preparing the chip that your chip is actually bad and, it, and do it. So I try to watch when I use this, like this guy, maybe he hasn't, he hasn't had a heat sink on before, but maybe I use him again and uh, it doesn't work again. I start suspecting maybe the chip is flawed. So um, it's good if you have some different bins and you kind of put your chips in and keep track. You know, because you could pay, what, 22 bucks, 25 bucks a piece for these guys? So you're sitting here, this little stack is, what, four, four or $500 maybe? Maybe not that much. I didn't pay that much for them. I got a good deal a while ago and I bought a bunch. So I'm still kind of surviving on those. So anyway, I want to show you my process. I have this little um, heat, uh, this vice. So I'll do one of the, I'll just clean up. Where's a good use? One? So this guy's pretty used up. I'll put him in first, so, and I'll show you a little close up. 
you'll see under my microscope, I'll show you the chip as I'm doing it. Um, so I clamp them in here, and sometimes it comes off and I have to reclamp, but that's just normal. So I actually clamp this guy and the chip is, chip is up. Um, I'll show you the chip in the mic microscope, you'll see it in here. Um, I do need a soldering iron. So I have this um, nice chisel blade on my soldering iron. See that right there? Um, I'm going to use that. I'm going to use a real low temperature. Low meaning 295 degrees. Um, I don't want to get the chip that hot. You can ruin the chip pretty quick. So you have to be careful and pretty quick about your, your business here. So um, I'll do that. Um, the first step is basically is I just I kind of coat the chip with flux, especially the legs. I mean, you want the flux to transmit that heat fast enough and get that solder off. So and then I'm going to cut. I'm going to use the chip quick solder. So you're going to cut a, a section of this copper braid off. And I've got another set of tweezers I use. For some reason, I like these uh, curved tweezers. So I kind of get that ready to go. Got that ready to go. I'm going to switch on my workstation here. I'm going to turn on the soldering iron. I'm going to set it for, let's just do 295, see how that works. And then I'm going to change views. I'm going to get the microscope out. Okay, we'll let that guy warm up nice. You want it kind of completely warm. So I'm going to switch views here. So let me go up a little bit higher. And you're not going to see the whole... Um, just a second here. Let's see if I can find out where we're at. There is the chip. All right, so let me switch cameras here. Yeah, there's the chip. You can see I've covered in flux. It's being held by the clamp. Not entirely, though. It's like I could get it tighter. Sometimes it comes loose, so hopefully I won't move this dude around too much. And my soldering iron's hot, so I'm going to take the braid. Set it down and just uh, let me get this soldering iron comfortable in my hands. And I just start kind of cleaning that chip off, sucking it up. Clean off the legs. Clean off the pad up here getting that excess solder off. Try not to stay in any one place too long because the chip will get too hot. All right, so you see my legs are cleaned off and the base is pretty cleaned off. Let's see here. Yeah, I think that works. It looks like uh, there's some solder built up down there. Let me just work this one area down here. See, that's probably where I cleaned it up more is down there. All right, so I'm happy with this one. Normally, I just don't do anything with the other side. I'm going to grab this guy with my tweezers. And I'm going to toss him in to my cap of alcohol. Let's do another one. So this one was one that's never seen production use. This is one of my copper tops. This does have good solder on it. I've got that in fairly good and tight there. Make sure he's clamped down on that. Okay, all right. So again, you flux it up. It's plenty of flux for sure. Um, I'm still using the same copper braid. I just keep moving around the section I use. So I'm putting it on the tweezer right now. So I'm gonna use kind of the central part. And again, just do the same thing. Why this clamp is holding it, you can kind of Get some cleaning going on. I learned about this holder on the Discord channel. Some folks had posted it. So I found, I think it costs around $45. I think in other places it's more expensive. There you go. That guy's ready to go back and get um, retinned with a tinning tool. So, all right. So I kind of hold it so the chip doesn't fall down in there. If it does, it's no big deal. Throw him in my cap of alcohol. Let's do one more. So this is one of my chips that I'm going to have to do both sides. So let's do that one now. I'll put this one in. We'll do the regular side first. I like to have a bunch of these to do. So. so you tend to use a lot of flux doing this. I might use too much. Who knows? 
This guy has a ton of the wrong solder on it. So let's see how good we can clean this up and get the right solder on. So choose a different place in my copper braid to plant that dude, plant that iron. See it soaking that up? Yeah, that's good stuff. So that's clean. Get the rest of those legs up there. Let's get this top part. Feels good. All right. So I've got that half the chip done. Now I have to turn it over. I've got, I've got the wrong solder on the top. Some really high temperature stuff that caused it to stick to the heat sink. So I'm going to put it in there and let's see what we can. Hopefully I can see what chip this was. Whether it was an AG or an AH or something. But boy, what a surprise just to reflow a chip. I was opening up some area around and pulling chips out right and left. So we'll see. All right, so this guy's in. I'm gonna, your hands get kind of sticky just dealing with this. So let's clean the top of that guy off. Let's see, find my, an open area on this. Take some of this stuff off. That's an AG chip. So, Alright, so my plan is I'm going to keep this chip separate because I know it has the wrong solder here. I'm going to make sure I'm just going to apply a little bit um, on the heat sink before I put it on. Um, I'll apply a little bit of uh, solder paste which is the right temperature solder paste. So I'm gonna keep him separate in my cup of alcohol. So anyway, this is gonna be a short video, but this is kind of the process. Let me switch back to the main screen now. So um, basically this is the setup I'm using. It's pretty simple. Um, you might see these for $90. I think they are there for 40. It has a lid to actually hold down a chip, a bigger chip. I don't use this part of it. It's it's um, CNC aluminum, so it's kind of nice. Thank you for the people that posted that on Discord. Here's my cap of alcohol with the chips I've done. Here's my pile of chips to do. So I'm going to sit here for the next you know 30 minutes just cleaning off chips. Then I actually have to go through the retinning process like you would do a brand new chip. And then you know hopefully two thirds of these chips are good, and will work. So um, don't throw away those chips, especially at today's prices. Try to reuse them. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this helps.